this video is long overdue for me to make. Now is the time. It's exactly what it says it is. So, um, before I begin, if you are a fan of Maniac Neil, Leslie Smith, I will give you a moment to turn off the video because this is not for you. And if you are Maniac Neil Leslie Smith, I dare you to cease and desist me because you had no fucking qualms throwing my name around and tarnishing my name with certain people years ago. So sit back and take what you can dish out. Otherwise, you are 100% bona fide gutless weak tit. Some of you may know this, but I will go ahead and just give a quick rundown. I discovered Razorback through the Impetigo reissues, but the Razorback band that I took to the most was Frightmare. I championed Neil. I became a fan of his other bands, Lord Gore and Blood Freak. Frightmare was always my favorite. But... No matter what, I just thought whatever he did was quality. However, when I got with Billy, I heard horror stories of Neil. That he would cause a bunch of fucking drama and then Billy would have to go in and do damage control. And, um... I mean, yeah, I heard some stories, and I just thought, oh my god, that kind of drama, I don't want a part of. Late 2010, early 2011, I really don't remember dates, because this was fucking traumatic for me to endure. I've tried to wipe a lot of it from my memory bank, so that it wouldn't cause irreparable damage to my fucking psyche. I had to work through this bullshit for years. And I feel like finally doing this is setting it free. Anyway, in that time frame, Blood Freak finished the album Scared Stiff, which later became Mind Scraper. Sent us the uh, the album to listen to and <laughs> the whole time it's playing Billy's just sitting there this sucks this sucks this sucks I don't like this man Neil's lost his touch this sucks we're not putting this out. I immediately go into, I'm going to get fucking blamed. If I can't talk him down, I tried. I said, we need to put this out. It's already been promoted that it's going to be on Razorback. We're under contract with Ed Repka, who's a huge artist, who's done death album covers, mega death. Uh, you know, we need to put this out. There's no questions. Something he said, though, didn't register right away. But it stuck with me. And it became apparent what was happening later down the road. He said, this is my chance to finally get rid of this guy. I continue, please, let's put this out. We have to put this out. We'll look bad if we do. 
And I don't want to deal with the drama that's going to come our way. And especially me, because I feel like I'm going to get blamed. Was I heard? Was my opinion respected? No, fuck no, it never was. This was the first time I realized I meant nothing to the person I was supposed to be. Uh, I was supposed to be the most important person to this person, and I wasn't. I was a scapegoat. He, Billy sends Neil the rejection email. And I, my stomach went into knots. I fucking dreaded what was coming our way. My intuition was correct. And I was blamed. Immediately. He said some nasty shit in the email. First of all, I never, I've never spoken to Neil Smith. I've never spoken to him. He doesn't know me. He never did. He never will. He doesn't know me. He at first said he liked the band Billy and I did together, Scaremaker. Then turned around and said, I lied. It sucks. So I'm like, these guys are just fucking... I came into this situation thinking metal guys they've got their shit together they're mature they don't put up with bullshit they are the biggest causers of bullshit and the biggest wimps and high schoolers ever and i'm like what the fuck is this guy's problem like that is that's silly i lied i don't like it. then okay then fuck you like what the fuck then he was like, where's Jill? Where's Jill? Jill has your balls in her purse. And I'm thinking, if Jill has Billy's balls in her purse, then that would not be in your favor. Like, that's not what that means. And I'm like, God, this guy like, is unbelievably stupid. Anyway, I gotta be honest, I don't remember the series of events. Again, this was really fucking traumatic. This whole era was traumatic. I was a fan of someone, and now they're blaming me for something that wasn't even a decision that I made. I tried to talk Billy into just putting the album out, and then I said, N put the album out, and then you can sever ties with him. I wasn't heard. I wasn't respected. And I was the scapegoat. I don't remember the series of events. I think Blood Freak did, a, did an interview that everyone fucking remembers to this day. And everyone fucking mentions it. And everyone has to fucking talk about it with Metal Maniacs, ripping me and Billy apart. I don't remember exactly what they said. I think I was called a tranny with a dick, but then they said I had a diseased vagina. It was a bunch of fucking stupid shit. That I wanted to avoid, but I wasn't respected. So then Billy goes and posts a note on Facebook, kind of like a blog, uh, stating why we didn't want to work with Neil. I feel like, well, I'm with Razorback now. I need to have a say, I guess. So I go on there to sh just be supportive and say my piece. And I need a drink for this one. I make a general comment, not typing anyone's name out, saying that I wasn't impressed with anyone so far dealing with this label. And that was very fair for me to say, because the minute I came on board with Razorback, everyone treated me like shit, except for a handful of people. 
Billy should have taken care of his baggage with Jill before I came on board. That was the mistake. It was my mistake for not pushing that a little more. I'll go over that a little more later. Uh, she had a fucking problem with me. I guess understandably so. But that wasn't my fucking fault. It was Billy too. I made a general comment on the note saying I wasn't impressed with the people that I had been dealing with with the record label. Some asshole, and I know who it was, went and told her, I don't know what he fucking told her, but it seems like he told her that I had typed her name out when I hadn't. And what she posts in response is more targeted towards me than my comment, which was all-encompassing, including her. It couldn't, or it could not have included her. That's how general of a comment it was. But her comment was, it's National Shut the Hell Up Day, and a certain female needs to shut up. So, <laughs> a day or so later, I don't know. Billy walks in with his father. We lived in the apartment downstairs of his parents' house. And he's holding something and he says, this was in the mailbox for you. It's not in an envelope. It's not obviously not postmarked. It's a handwritten letter. I open it up. It's from Jill's father threatening legal action against me of cease and desist. The motherfucker didn't even research what he was accusing me of. I was like, who does this? What kind of morons am I dealing with here? Because this is unreal. I want a restraining order on this guy. Billy's parents blow up. His mom basically turns it all around on me. And I'm like, well, wait a second. Let's get the story straight, you know. Then it turns into you stay downstairs and we're going to go, the three of us, upstairs and talk about this. But I can hear everything because they're fucking loud. And the subject is being danced around. And Billy's not completely owning the fact that, hey, I didn't want to put a death metal album out. The guy's a fucking lunatic. And my wife is upset. And then I post, uh, they did an interview. They're fucking jackasses saying stupid shit. I post a note explaining our end of the deal. And now Jill's in the mix with her stupid shit. None of that's really being laid out. So I go upstairs and I'm like, let's... We need to really get this, you know, ironed out and told. And I want a restraining order on this fucking idiot. His mom is like, get, get away from me. Go back downstairs. You're not supposed to be up here. Because that's, that's how they are. They control people. And I was like, no, 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 no. I, I, this is not the reality of it. This is... God, I don't understand what's going on. I want to be left alone and blah, 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 blah. If you weren't doing this and you weren't doing that, then, then none of this would have happened. And it's like, I'm not doing anything. That's the fucking point. What kind of twilight zone am I living in right now? Like, this is insane. And she, lun like, she lunges at me or does something and I'm like, fucking try it, cunt. I don't remember what I said. Exactly, but I remember calling her a cunt. There was a lot of emotions. There was a lot of bullshit, and I was up to my fucking nostrils in it. She comes at me, and I'm like, fuck this. I run downstairs. I lock the door to the apartment. I call the cops. I say that I'm being threatened physically. And there's a whole ordeal going on that I need the police to come and get involved in. 
They come. They tell me and Billy we shouldn't even be living there. So, that was no help. Imagine that. The cops not being a help. And, um... They said, yeah, you can get your restraining order or whatever, but honestly, you guys don't need to be living here. So, I'm like, okay, fuck living here then. Fuck Long Island. Fuck everyone on it. And I call my stepmom and I tell her what's going on. And she's like, this, if I didn't witness what was happening to you and seeing it for myself, I would think that you were off your rocker because this is so fucking extra and so fucking insane. And I'm like, I'm losing my fucking mind. We move. Years later, I see Neil getting some kind of karma that some women think two or three maybe, had come forward saying that he beat them and that he was a girlfriend beater. I saw a mug shot. I don't know if it was for domestic violence or something else. Uh, because at the time, I wasn't on social media that much. I was working a stressful job full-time. Billy quit his 20-hour week job at Kmart because he couldn't handle it and uh I was doing my bands I was putting all all of that trauma the good thing from that was just me focusing on bands and doing shit and evil speak and and you know um but I don't know what was up with the Neil thing completely but all I know is women claimed that he beat them I can believe it um, <clears throat> yeah, and Street Trash Travis, who was the drummer for Blood Freak, was all excited to work with me, came to me and was like, let's do something, and then he made an announcement that he was going to work with me, and all in private messages, he stoked, you know, and, but then I guess Daddy Neil had a say, and... You know, fucked that up. Which maybe I dodged a bullet with that. But that was another instance where it was like... some He had to make an announcement. Oh, I'm not going to work with Vanessa anymore. I've decided to not work with her. And it's like... Just leave it. Don't even make a public announcement. Because all those... Uh, all the people who are just... Neil fanboys are going to just cling on to him and agree with you. And it's like, I, I don't fucking need that. Just fuck it. Other people got weird. I'm not even going to go into this completely. But Aaron Witzel from Cropsy Maniac was one of them. He had a weird fixation on me, it seemed. He was taking black metal photos trying to impress me saying that we should hang out and, like, all this stuff. Then all of a sudden, he deletes me, and then a slew of other people followed suit. I guess he was like, let's all delete her. And it's like, I'm just living my life. I just wanted to put out a death metal album to avoid the drama, and it trickled down with a ton of idiots through the years. Who blamed me for shit. And treated me like shit for this shit. And I got shit on. All the fucking time. For nothing. For something that I didn't do. So, let it be known. Blood Freak. Scared Stiff. Which later became Mind Scraper. Was supposed to come out on Razorback. I wanted to put the fucking thing out. And I got told No. But I got the blame for it not coming out. I have a ton of people who hate me for no fucking reason. And now they're all fucking friends again. With Billy and Jill. And they're all in their little fucked up circle. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Is 
your lives are really that fucking empty that you're going to be friends with an accused woman beater, whether he did it or not. You're going to be friends with him. Okay. I'm going to end with a bonus story. Here's another time that I was a scapegoat. Colin Rogers, who I regret including in my Necromantical Screams Volume 1, and who was uh, associated with Evil Speak. He was a fixture in our group at Wasteland. Uh, yeah, Colin Rogers made a fake profile under the name Gretchen. I don't remember the last name. Don't care to. I just remember Gretchen because there's also a weird story behind that with Billy and Jill back when they were dating. Billy, I think, had a crush on a girl named Gretchen and he wanted to date her and she didn't want to... I don't know the story. He liked her. She didn't like him. Something like that. And Jill used to tease him about it, but she would call the girl Gretel and get the name wrong on purpose thinking that that was funny, I guess. I don't know. But that was the name of the profile that they made. I think Billy was involved in making it. It was it was Colin, Billy, uh, Leon, Doc Holocausto, and Ruben Splatterbeast. They all um, were a part of this. I don't know if they all had access to the profile or what, but it was a fake profile. They were all in on it. And they were harassing people who didn't like me. They didn't like Billy either. But I'm like the bottom of the fucking totem pole. The shit of the shit to these people. And I remember seeing Cam Lee and Jill talking about me. Or talking about that profile as if it were me using it. It wasn't me. It was Colin Rogers. And it was all of them. They had something to do with it. I had nothing to fucking do with that profile. I didn't even have time to really get on my own profile. May I remind you why? I was working a full-time bank job that was supposed to be part-time. Highly stressful. Some nights I would come home and drink wine to relax. And then I would work on evil speak stuff. Or I would work on music stuff. I kept busy. I didn't want to be on social media. Because I didn't want to see all of you fucked up people doing whatever you're doing. So, the Gretchen profile was not me. When I mentioned to Billy that I wanted to make a public post saying that it wasn't me. Again, I was the scapegoat. No... No, you can't do that. That's going to just bring attention to that. Don't do that. Don't make a post. Well, I want it known that it's not me. No, d just let it go. Just let, I'll tell Colin to stop using it. Just let it go. I didn't let it go. I'm talking about it now. And I hope all of you motherfuckers see this video. That's enough. I can't continue on. The next video is not going to... I got to take a break from these uh, venting videos. I, the next video is going to be either a movie review or me talking about being creative. I fucking hate these people. They wonder why I left. They wonder why I don't want to have anything to do with them because of all this fucking abuse that I took. It's not abuse. It's fucking abuse. I was controlled, manipulated, a scapegoat. I was fucking used. I was abused. I was fucking shit-talked for nothing. For something that someone else fucking did. Someone who was supposed to be my, my partner. Someone who stood up for me and built me up, not drug me fucking down all the time.
this is this is out there. I've set it free. This was not easy for me. I had to say it. It needed to be said. I don't want to keep going. And like I said, the next video is either going to be a movie review or something fun. And uh, I fucking hate these people. And uh, the only positive note I can end on is that the next video I make won't be so heated. And I hope you join me for that. And, uh, yeah. If you stuck all the way through, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.